quick, before we start the video, I asked on Facebook for people to submit photos of handmade Lolita so you could have something to look at besides my face. I got so many responses, thank you all so much. I'm going to try to include as many as I can. I'm taking them all from this post while editing, so if you send it somewhere else, I may not have found it. I'm sorry, it's easiest to keep them all in one spot. Please feel free to pause the video at any time and pull up the old Etsy or Google search because some of these Lolitas have shops or Instagrams you can check for inspiration. Lastly, these photos do not correspond with what I am saying. They are just a visual aid. So if I'm talking about something bad or what not to do, I'm not talking about that person, but handmade Lolita in general. I made this video without having these photos to reference. I got them all afterwards. Please keep an eye on Facebook because I would love to include more submissions in future videos. And that's the easiest way to keep them all in one spot. Now, let the video begin. Hello friends! So after five years on YouTube and maybe the same on Tumblr or more or less, I still get asked the same question every day across all platforms and that is, what is my opinion on Handmade Lolita? I really want to tackle this subject from every different angle, why people would ask that and why people wear handmade Lolita and kind of misconceptions people have about it so that the next time I'm asked that question I can just send them this video because <laughs> that's kind of my goal is just to have a video for every question that someone could ask me. My personal opinion is that I appreciate handmade Lolita. I can't make anything. I don't have the skills. So anytime somebody shows me something that's handmade I'm like Whoa! Mind blow! Like, this is incredible! I always appreciate it. I think it's really neat. I think it's a really creative, cool way to do different Lolita looks and to expand on different styles and kind of keep the fashion evolving. I think that people ask me a lot of these things because they see me as some sort of, like, authority over the Lolita community, which is not true at all. I can't speak on behalf of every Lolita. I can't speak on behalf of the community. It's just my own opinions, what I personally think. What I've witnessed from being in the Lolita community is that a lot of people at meets will also feel the same way. They also express that they are impressed with handmade Lolita and people are envious and it's, yeah, it's a good thing. Another thing that goes hand in hand with that is people ask, is handmade Lolita Ida? Which, if you're new here, Ida means, like, a bad Lolita. It's something that is considered, like, not Lolita. I don't have the authority to say what is or isn't Ida, but the most important thing is that you shouldn't let the possibility of being called an Ida stop you from anything. You shouldn't let the possibility of somebody judging you negatively ever stop you. This has been, like, a common theme throughout a lot of my Lolita advice videos. It's like, just don't get caught up in what could possibly happen that's negative because you'll miss out on a lot of good experiences and good things. In my seven plus years in the Lolita community, I've never witnessed somebody in person telling another Lolita like, oh, this is a bad coordinate, this is Edith, you made this, ugh. I think that that idea just lives online. I can't just tell you to avoid the internet and live your life. I mean, I could, but like, the internet has become so cohesive with our everyday life that it is hard to separate yourself from, but you can separate yourself from like CGL, which I feel, I don't know, but I feel like that's probably where people get these ideas or like hate boards or like criticism boards. And I know I've talked about CGL before and like there is good stuff on there, probably. I've heard <laughs> there's a lot of Lolitas that also like cosplay or are seamstresses. So there is the possibility of that judgment of somebody judging the actual like skill of your work. And I hope that people do that because they want to be constructive and help you out. You have to realize too that you'll look back and be like, ugh, at some of your coordinates. I don't even make things. And I look back at some of the coordinates I've put together and I'm like ashamed and I think that they're gross and terrible and I've never wear them again, but I've learned like, what did I do wrong in this coordinate? How can I improve it? How can I make it better? A really common kind of newbie idea is that 
they see the price of Lolita and think, oh, handmaking stuff is so much cheaper. It's not. I mean, it can be, but it's not always the route. And I would say, if you're considering handmaking your Lolita, do it because you want to do it and not because you think that it's a cheap alternative. Because you have to think about all of the material that goes together to make these dresses is a lot of material. And there's a possibility of you messing up and having to remake something. Also, you have to consider what your time is worth. Especially in 2017 now, there are so many options for you to get affordable Alita. There is Taobao resellers, so you don't even have to deal with like Taobao's crazy shopping services or get overwhelmed or stressed. It's just there and you just buy it. For example, shameless plug, this is a devil inspired dress and I have a full video on devil inspired. Um, they have really affordable dresses. I've also talked about Wonderwelt. Y'all, there's no excuses. You can get dresses for like $40, which is the same price you'll pay at Forever 21 for like a sundress. Come on, there's lots of options for you. What I, yeah, what I really want to drive home is that don't do it because you think it's going to be cheaper. Do it because you want to, because you want to make that item. I think that Handmade Lolita is also really important because it begins brands too, like indie brands, like Baby Ponytail, Truly Darling, um, my friend Ray's brand, which I don't know what the name of it is. Teddy Bear Bones, Teddy Bear Bones, Teddy Bear Bones. How could I forget Teddy Bear Bones? I love teddy bears. <laughs> and it has a really wide range of sizes too. All of those, all of those Alitas, all those brands started off as just individual Alitas who were creating their own dresses. All right, so what have we covered? I like handmade Lolita. Personally, I like it. That is my opinion. I appreciate it. I think that it's great. I love to see handmade coordinates. Um, there's a wig hair on my hand. Don't let the risk of being judged stop you from doing anything. Make handmade Lolita because you want to and not because you think it's a cheap alternative. I definitely support smaller indie brands and you should too. Please check them out. At some point I want to make a complete indie brand guide video. I will post a submissions for that on Facebook later so you can share with me some of your favorite indie brands. I mean, in the meantime, feel free to share them in the comments below too. I'd love to check them out. Don't be afraid to make your own clothes, wear them proudly. Even if people judge you for wearing handmade Lolita, they either didn't make their dress themselves, so whatever, you did this cool, amazing thing that they didn't, or they do make dresses themselves, and at one point they were also a beginner and they also had to start somewhere. So always remember that. I hope that I've covered everything possible. I didn't really prepare this video, I just started talking. Uh, what am I forgetting? Oh yeah, stay lovely. <laughs>